Kendall Jackson would not be here today if it wasn't for its association with and use of barrels, and we will always believe in barrels. I don't know of any other wine company that has put as much resources into pairing up vineyards and wine styles with forest selection, with coopering techniques as a Jackson family. Jess was really building up Kendall Jackson in the mid-80s. He wanted to maintain the French artisan winemaking techniques, and so he was very interested in the quality of the French oak. He wanted to look at partnering with somebody that had the same core values. So we went with a family operation and got together with the Boswell family and went over to create a stave mill in France and decided they were going to break the mold of the barrel world. But by going over there, we were able to guarantee exactly where the oak would come from, what forest, what grain tightness there. So if you're after quality, just like we are with grapes and vineyards, if they're your own, you're gonna do it right. From a winemaker's perspective, this is a match made in heaven because you have ultimate control of exactly where the oak is coming from, guaranteed control. And then we stack those staves and age them in France, and we're under total control of how long that wood ages. And knowing that is critically important because the forest will impart different flavors and nuances and hues to a wine. And then on top of that, the really artsy part for us is once we ship those staves to America, we've worked for decades perfecting the art of toasting a barrel. I mean, I compare barrel making a lot to cooking meat, which sometimes might be a seven minute, really hot fire, which creates, you know, kind of a real creme brulee character with a bunch of natural raw French oak behind it. Other times, we toast the barrel for, you know, an hour, 70 minutes of slow temperature, you know, so the barrel is full of extractives and maybe a little more vanilla and a little less tannin or a little less structure. And our barrels are more like a gourmet meal made by a master chef. We call them a wood chef. So we still have a person that's helping, that's monitoring every barrel during the toasting process in order to control the exactness of the quality of each barrel we make. As we've grown over the years, we've maintained our small winemaking philosophy and quality winemaking philosophy to use barrels and only barrels. And that has been key to our success because now if we are requesting a Vosges barrel for our Chardonnay, we know without a doubt guaranteed that it is from the Vosges district. It's just not the grape. So yes, tree to table, definitely. And when we get done with those barrels, we'll make a few tables out of them. Welcome back to Wine Line Radio and Wine Line TV. This is your host, Robert Scott, and I'm actually thrilled today to be speaking with Randy Ulam. Randy is the uh, wine master for Kendall Jackson and for Jackson Family Wines, and uh, he's been around Kendall for quite a long time, about 20 years, I think, uh, you came in 1993, I believe. Is that correct? That is correct. So it'd be 27 years coming up. Well, that was a pretty quick uh, 27. Wow. So in 97, you were named the wine master for Kendall Jackson. So that you came a long way in correct. three years. Yeah. And then uh, to 2006, you became the COF, uh, COO, I should say, the Chief Operating Officer. So, quite a step. So, Randy, besides making wonderful wines, being the uh, Chief Operating Officer, you have to really consider what's going on with the marketing end of the business. And in today's market, with the pandemic uh, that we've been going through, it certainly changed things for people in the wine industry. How do you see that it's affected Kendall Jackson and the other wines at Jackson Family Wines? Well, you know, obviously with all or most all of the restaurants 
uh, closed or partially or mostly closed. And we call that um, on premise is the term mm -hmm. for restaurants because the wine is sold and open and, and drank there on premise versus off premise, like a grocery store where you take it home and then and, and drink it there. So the on premise business is down radically because most most restaurants are closed and those that are doing curbside service are also offering wines too uh, and pre-made drinks believe it or not but that that the, the normal sales amount isn't that high so you can as one could imagine uh, sales at restaurants or two restaurants are has you know dropped precipitously whereas sales in in the if you have wine in a in a in a store a grocery store or a wine store what have you uh their uh sales are up and they're up actually considerable uh in certain areas and i think you know what people are doing is you know being sheltering in place and at home you know, they're sort of pan there's pantrification going on, stocking up on different things in the home. But they're also, you know, everyone's just a little nervous. So they're going for the comfort wines, the ones that they know uh, are tried and true. And that's where we fortunately fit in on the Kendall Jackson side. You know, La Crema is part of our, uh, our group of Jackson family wines. And so, and Murphy Good. So those those brands are doing are doing okay on that on that area the um, off uh, off uh, premise sales and then i think sort of the you know the, the brands that are really truly more focused on on restaurants of course aren't doing quite as quite as good uh, but it's an interesting time that's for darn sure you know watching what's going on and hopefully there's an end in sight yeah hopefully uh have you uh, seen an increase uh, or more interest on the digital side? For instance, if you have a wine club or uh, able to uh, sell your wines uh, over the Internet, uh, has that business uh, stayed the same, picked up a little bit, or gotten softer? A direct-to-consumer sales yes. we, we, we do ourselves has, has picked up. Uh, wine club. Unfortunately, they, we can't have the you know the quarterly wine club get-togethers, but but uh, we're, we, you know, people can still buy wine, pick their wine up, uh, hmm. sort of what's called curbside service at the, at the right. Colonel Jackson Wine Estate and Garden Center. Um, the other thing that's you know we're doing is there's a lot of uh, my, of uh, Skype uh, meetings going on, and, and Zoom is becoming really big. So we just did, as an example, a uh, half-hour discussion on with wine.com and Friday, and that was, and they invited people, you know, well in advance. They had over, I don't know, I probably shouldn't say the number, but quite a large number, uh, where people pre, actually pre-ordered the wines to go right. through them with us in person, and and then there was a handful that just watched. And hopefully they will go and you know get those wines. So between all of these these different pathways, be it Skype, Zoom, what have you, uh, everybody, you know, not just ourselves, but everyone in the wine business is taking advantage of that. Especially since people have, you know, they're stuck at home, and so they get an opportunity here to see and meet a lot of people and hear them chat, you know, first almost firsthand. Right. You know, you can look them in the eyes. You know, so that's, uh, that's uh, really taken off, and it's doing well. Well, that's good. And the next question I have for you is, when this uh, pandemic is over and done with, and we're back to what is normal for us, do you think that this digital marketing is going to continue and maybe even increase? Uh, if you found it successful now, why wouldn't you find it successful in the future? Well, you know, I'm not, I don't have a crystal ball in front of me, but, you but don't? I'm going to go out on a limb and say that, yes, it will 
it may not stay at the same rate it is right now because people will be allowed to go out and about and do, you know, about their normal uh, daily business and, and come back to the wine country and visit when all the hotels are open and the restaurants are open. So I think it'll go down a little bit, but it'll definitely net out higher than it was before all this happened. It'll be a kind of a happy medium in the, in the middle. Well, it's great. It gives you another uh, profit center, really, from a business standpoint. And a great way to, right. well, we, to really get your brand out there in the front of a lot of other people that may not have been familiar with it. Right, right. Well, that, that's for sure. I, I think that, you know, there is an awful lot. I mean, we're going through uh, the different media out there and trying to, you know, end up where kind of see our name you know, relatively soon when you click something about maybe Healdsburg or what have you. Right. Uh, you know, we're trying to really you know, put that out there. And the other thing where we have, you know, again, a, I think a, a bit of an advantage is, you know, we've been around for what, 37 years or something like that. And, um, or 38 and counting, but we are a brand, Kendall Jackson, that everyone knows, everyone loves, they're comfortable with it. And so, you know, they're not going to go out on a limb, especially if they're, you know, becoming concerned about finances and things like that. They're going for what they, what they know and what they truly enjoy. And, and that's something that we've worked so hard at you know, all these decades to, to become just that. And by doing that, it's, maintaining if not enhancing on a yearly basis the quality you know being family owned is critically important having you know, the majority of the vineyards being our very own is important having the sort of the same ratios by appellation and region year mm -hmm. in and year out is important by maintaining our barrel program that's important for consistency so folks know that what they're going to get and, and that there is consistency and quality always uh, at Kendall Jackson. So it's comforting and comfortable. Yeah, absolutely. And it's great for a consumer to know when he goes and gets a bottle off the shelf that it's going to be remarkably like the wine he had two or three years ago. So that consistency and you know, blending for a certain style is uh, very important, I think. Absolutely. And, and, and one of those reasons that we can do that is we have, you know, our, our oak and forest sources are, are locked up. We, we have a half ownership of a stave mill in France to kind of guarantee that. We, as I mentioned earlier, have the majority of the vineyards that are sourced for our wines are our, our, our very own. And if the, the percent that's from an outside grower, third party grower, those are all you know, almost entirely under what we call three year evergreen contracts. So they're, you know, we're not bouncing around left and right all over the place yeah. uh, looking for necessarily the cheapest grape. We're, we're looking for good grapes and we want good growers. We want that continuity, you know, and to you know create a family of grape growers. Our family, of course, the Jacksons being the largest uh, in in our in our group. But that really helps, uh, and it helps to mitigate what Mother Nature might throw at you too by having vineyards. You know, all our vineyards are along the cool coast of California, uh, districts one through eight. So that's Mendocino County, Lake County, uh, Sonoma County, Napa County, and then. I guess Marin and on down to Monterey, San Luis, and and um, Santa Barbara County. Yeah. And so they're all, 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 you know, if you have like a you know a, a weather event in one spot, it uh, it um, it uh, is mitigated. The effect is sure. mitigated a little bit. Well, you uh, have production in Argentina as well. To peas. Well, we used to. Oh, okay. uh, we sold that. But you I, did. Okay. In the very beginning, you were asking. You know, those first three years of my of my career here with uh, Just Jackson and the family. 
uh, who's he's now deceased, and Barbara is the lead. Uh, um, I did many of the international projects, that being starting starting the Tapiz project in Argentina, starting Kalina in Chile, mm-hmm. starting Yangara in Australia, and working with the three different projects we had, kind of developing them over there in, in, uh, in Italy, plus a few others that we elected to not continue on. But that, that gave me you know, a broad uh, experience across the globe on different varieties and different weather and things like that and custom. Well, experience uh, in one area certainly begets experience in another area. So, Randy, thank you so much. It was uh, a pleasure.